Yeah. Awesome. So I want to welcome everyone to yet another one of our informative series from the Fishtown Kensington Business Improvement District to help everybody get the resources and information and data they need to not only operate, but also to thrive during this climate. Um, we're pleased to have today, today with all of the changes and rapid things happening up in Harrisburg in the city of Philadelphia, uh, especially in our restaurant and hospitality industries, we thought it was important for all of you to have this meeting so that we can kind of give you updates of what's going on. Some of it's going to be minute by minute as we're speaking. Uh, we're pleased to be joined by Ben Palicchio from the Pennsylvania Restaurant and Lodging Association. Ben is the Director of Operations and Strategy for the Philadelphia Reason region. And we also have Javier Mojica, who is one of our, we're lucky to have such a great partner in the Department of Commerce. So Javier, good afternoon. Why don't we jump right in with Ben? I know there's been a lot going on, both with the court cases and litigation from a Harrisburg perspective, as well as legislation that's passing. So if you could first, before we delve in a little bit later into questions, kind of give everybody an overview of both where we stand, particularly in Philadelphia, regarding opening and reopening and inside and outside service, as well as what's been pending as we speak now. Sure. So as, as you're all aware, uh, indoor dining started in Philadelphia on uh, September 8th. Um, so far, I've been hearing positive results from the folks that have reopened. Uh, just in my uh, travels, it seems, a little over 50% of the restaurants in Center City area have actually started indoor dining. Um, a lot of them chose not to, either because of uh, staffing or because of size restrictions. Um, just to give you an example, like uh, Good Dog Bar on um, 15th Street, they, because they're, they're mostly bar seating on all three floors, they would only allow, be allowed to have five and a half guests per floor. So it just didn't work out, you know, for them. Um, we've been saying the outdoor seating has been robust, to say the least. All the street closures have been um, going swimmingly. The, from uh, Javier, I'm, I'm sure you've heard only uh, good reports from the, from the different areas. As Excellent I, reports. As I told you, you know, when they began this program, I was, um, I, you know, I was having sleepless nights before it started. And, uh, but I've seen all the different bids and all the different neighborhoods and all the different restaurants in particular really step up to the plate and uh, operate these street closures safely. And they're protecting their employees. They're pr protecting the guests and the pedestrians that are walking down the street. So you know, we couldn't be more thrilled. Um, we just received back from the health department yesterday, a FAQ about indoor dining. Um, when I have a second, I'll share that with you. It was in our update yesterday, you may have seen it. Um, but it, it, it is a great piece of information. Um, but again, I'm always available as well. My phone is uh, texting off the hook when people have questions, when they need to know something. Uh, and, and this goes for you guys as well. I would much rather you just uh, text me a quick question or text me uh, a, a question about guidance and uh, me to get that answer to you right away than you just waste any time looking for the right answers um, because I'd much rather you be doing what you guys do best. Um, so that is, uh, that's what's going on in the city. Dr. Farley next week uh, will announce uh, whether we will be increasing capacity to 50% in the city, and if we will, what that timeline looks like. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm anticipating, um, you know, that, that, that announcement. Um, as far as what we're waiting on right now, House Bill 2513. So this only affects Philadelphia in the sense that we see Philadelphia uh, lag behind state uh, guidance by three to six weeks historically over the past three or four months. Um, and the, the municipalities always have to follow the stricter guidelines. So uh, by loosening up the guidelines across the state, 
in a safe manner, it will allow Philadelphia, when they so choose, to also lift the uh, standards and um, you know follow in Pennsylvania's footsteps uh, at, to, to allow an expanded uh, dining rooms in a safe way. What 2513 does, we weren't asking for the moon and stars on this uh, bill at all. What we were asking for was to go back to uh, pre-July 15 standards that we'd worked with the governor's office to create a uh, safe uh, opening pathway for the restaurants and our event facilities. And what it does is it uh, has a minimum of 50% capacity inside restaurants um, using uh, social distancing, barriers, and all CDC guidelines. It allows for bar seating uh, with the use of social distance and or barriers. Uh, it would get rid of the mandate that requires food sales uh, with alcohol and would also push private events uh, back to 50% for indoor capacity as opposed to the arbitrary 25-person uh, uh, indoor event limit now. Uh, this, this is all, hold on one second. Text alert. Um, wrong alert. Um, I, I, I have somebody uh, watching it who does not follow legislation that often, but I, I applaud her efforts in trying to keep me informed. Um, so, you know, we're, we, we, want, we, we know we can open safely. You know, the, the, we don't have any data from the state that restaurants are causing any of these issues or clubs are causing any of these issues. Uh, we do have a lot of firsthand knowledge that because people are not being able to go into restaurants and have their weddings, that they're doing it unsafely in backyards and in houses and in colleges. We're seeing it at off-campus um, houses. Um, you know, the restaurant industry, the catering industry, the hotel industry does not want to be the people that are enforcing all these restrictions, but we will because, you know, we, we want to try to survive. And, but we do know that if we're not enforcing it and we're not allowing our guests to come in, they are going to find another place to go. I mean, wait for the first Monday night uh, football game that starts, you know, the second one that starts at 10 o'clock. And, you know, at 11 o'clock when, when alcohol sales stop, stop, you know, people are going to be going into, uh, going into their homes and, and congregating, and that's not what we want. We want people to wear masks, people to practice social distancing, and first and foremost, no seat, no service. We want people to be sitting down when they're, when they're drinking, sitting down when they're eating. That, um, that takes care of the whole congregating aspect that we, we know uh, can spread this uh, deadly virus. So uh, that's what our hope is. So 2513 passed the Senate, uh, came out of the Senate yesterday with an overwhelming bipartisan majority of 43 to 6. We were, had our fingers crossed that we would get 37. So we got uh, 46. Uh, three of the senators that voted no are Philadelphia folks, uh, Senator Street, Senator Haywood, Senator Hughes, Senator uh, Muth, uh, she's from Chester County, um, and uh, also Senator Leach. Um, so, uh, and and uh, Senator Farnese, who I was really surprised because uh, so many of our great restaurants are in his district. I know his uh, term ends in November and I was really hoping for his support, but a 43 to 36 margin coming out of the Senate is absolutely huge. Uh, we were expecting the House vote to happen next Monday when the House returned. The House returned and we talked to them yesterday. They said the vote would be next Monday. We got an email this morning at 930 that said they were going to vote on it this afternoon. Um, they're voting on it as we speak. Um, so what happens next? What does this mean, right? So if we get a majority vote, it'll uh, then go to the governor's desk to be signed. He has uh, said that he will not sign this bill. So we're looking for a, a super majority. Uh, we want a veto-proof bill, um, which would be uh, 136. Um, so the, the, the governor can either 
uh, veto it, and then it would go back and, um, you know, go back and then they, they would have to override it. So we would need an override vote of 136 votes. So we're hoping that everybody that votes today will also vote to override when the, when the governor, uh, if he chooses to veto it, that, you know, that, that they would override it. The governor could also not do anything and then it would become law. Um, or the governor would sign it, but we, we know that's not happening. Um, the override vote on the, um, the House bill that would allow uh, spectators at high school uh, sports events um, did, not, uh, did not pass out today. Um, but it's a whole, you know, it's apples and oranges, uh, you know, compared to our bill. So we have very high hopes for our bill. And uh, I'm, I'm waiting for, a, he keeps seeing me looking to my left. I'm waiting for an email from Melissa to pop up on my screen. Um, it hasn't happened yet. Uh, you know, if it happens during the course of our call, I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, finally, I'll just touch on the, um, the, the uh, federal court ruling against the uh, governor and then uh, the denial of his stay yesterday and what that means for Philadelphia. What it means for Philadelphia is nothing. Not helping you guys out here. If you're outside of the city, it does help. But um, counties that have their own health department, especially Philadelphia being a city of the first class, they can uh, make their own restrictions on that. Outside of Philadelphia, if you're talking to your friends out there and outside of um, who has their own health department, outside of Allegheny, uh, Chester County also does Delaware County, Monco has their own health department, Erie has their own health department, that's about it. Um, but outside of them, you know, people could go to 50% uh, indoor um, events now. So I, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell your friends to book anything because the, the, um, the federal judgment went against his 25 person indoor capacity. So the governor could on Friday, this is something that worries us, could on Friday say, the indoor capacity is now 30 people and it would start the whole process again. Um, so, uh, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a wait and see right now. Um, that being said, I, I think I have all the updates. We got our vote, not as high as I would like, but we only needed 136 and we got 145. That's huge. That, that's, that's, uh, that's the, that's the best news. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna go. I, I think I'm just gonna go now. Bye. Uh, no, that's 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 <laughs> unbelievable. Um, you know, some something that was said prior to the vote was uh, a few people said, if you are voting yes on this now, do not be disingenuous and vote no when it comes time to override this vote. And so this is so significant because uh, first of all, it pushes up the timeline. The governor, I guess, has 10 days now to uh, veto this or, or let it go into law. But it really moves the needle too. It's showing that um, this bill has bipartisan support, that, that it's, not just, it's, it's not just the Ds or not just the Rs. This is everybody getting together, concerned about our industry, wanting people to get back to work, it's, it's so important, and, and this was one of the best, this is, I'm sure Melissa is crying right now, or um, drinking heavily, hopefully both. Um, <laughs> that being said, I, I, I mean, I, I, I came, that came at a perfect time, so with that, I, I cede my time to whomever. Ben, quick question for you before I go to Javier, and I, certainly with some of our folks on this call, I know we'll have questions who have venue some of our larger venues and, and by the way we appreciate ben uh, toured our corridor a couple of weeks back and really was very helpful for our restaurant eateries and taverns and answering questions what would prevent if it possible with the court ruling from the circuit court a philadelphia entity trying to bring a similar action saying we have a, we have a precedent here that says that this is unconstitutional would would some Philadelphia business or anybody or legislators in this case have the ability to bring a similar action for Philadelphia? 
Well, I, I mean, it could, but then you're still dealing with, you're pushing still dealing with the health department. Curious. You're still dealing with the health department. The, the other, you, you also have to realize the, this court action uh, began in May, right? So, you know, uh, how's that going to help us when we need it the most? You know, we don't have five months to wait around, which is why that we really feel that 2513 is our best bet. And, and, and listen, I, as far as the city goes and, and Dr. Farley goes, and I, I'm, I hope Javier agrees with me, the actions of, um, of our bids, of, of our restaurants, um, you know, the, I, I've been, you know, meeting with the health department. I've been showing up to places where the health department has been uh, visiting restaurants. Uh, I've been showing up at places where L and I is on site. Um, the, the the vast vast majority of uh, our, our establishments in Philadelphia are doing a fantastic job. Um, you know, and and the spread is not coming from us. I mean, you know, we heard Dr. Levine three weeks ago say that, you know, there's spikes in college towns because the kids are going to the bars. And, um, you know, my response was bars were closed on July 15th. I'm not really sure how this is happening. But right now we really have to just do a great job of keeping, keeping our guests safe, keeping our employees safe, showing what a great job we are doing. Um, Farley, Farley is running the show. He, he's been, he's been keeping us safe. Um, and, uh, you know, and, you know, hopefully we continue to keep everybody safe and he recognizes that fact. We get to 50%. They allow bar seating in the state. They, then they allow bar seating in Philadelphia. They get indoor capacity events to 50% in the state. We do it well. We do it safely. Philadelphia follows that lead. We start doing it safely here. It's getting cold out there. I was already on my winterization task force call. Um, you know, I, I was in the Poconos over the weekend. I sat, I sat outside for dinner. At, you know, it was 43 degrees. Um, my tater tots were cold before they hit the table, but I was still happy to eat them. My whiskey stayed cold throughout my entire meal. So, you know, silver linings there. But, you know, we have a lot to think about in the next few months. And, um, you know, we, we've been trying to put a little Band-Aids on everything. But, I, I mean, this, this bill right now, this, 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 is, this could be our lifesaver. Javier, if, it, I want to see if you have anything to add from a city level. From, we actually got news this morning. That we heard that uh, Councilman Dom is going to be introducing a bill to extend the, you know, the outdoor dining streeteries, which would have expired. December 31st of 2020 to extend it another year to December 31st of 2021, which we 100% endorse. Um, from what we understand, there's probably 11 co-sponsors. So that is a good indication of uh, widespread council support. I know one of the things that we are pushing for as a business improvement district, both when you know we were instrumental in helping writing that and getting that, in, that pushed, is we would love a lot of these, and Ben, you saw, I know Javier, you've seen, a lot of our restaurants have gone to great expense in building these, um, these streetries. Yeah. We'd love to be able to give them the opportunity to keep that. Javier, I'm going to defer to you to kind of give us an update from, a, from the city's perspective of what you know. Well, at, <clears throat> at this time we continue, uh, thank you for the invitation, we continue uh, pretty much providing assistance to all the businesses that are uh, restaurants that are opening uh, or expanding, opening and expanding uh, their businesses that are, we still, you know, working with businesses that are uh, moving forward with the outdoor dining and also um, moving forward with the indoor dining. So we're constantly educating and, uh, and helping businesses throughout the whole city. Um, so it's uh, we are there. We're there for for them, and uh, and we are we're here to pretty much uh, facilitate that whole process. Thank you, Javier, and we appreciate all your help. Um, ben, you indicated that uh, Dr. Farley will be 
making a comment on increasing from 25% capacity inside to 50%. He'll be talking about that early next week? Yeah, he said he would make that announcement uh, next week. Awesome. He said, you know, he said October, which is next week, so. So uh, before we open it up to the group for questions, uh, I know two of our, and this has been one of my uh, continuous battles. I know I have a Matt, Matt and Amanda from the Fillmore punchline is one of the things that we have had, we're lucky to have a few entertainment venues. We also have the casino in our district and how to help what, to be honest, I give Punchline Philly and, and Fillmore all the credit in the world that they're able to operate and all, but certainly we believe and they believe that they have an ability to operate safely inside. Um, and venues seem to have been excluded. One of the big things that has been a question to me, I know Ben, you and I talked about it when you came was, you know, we have that 50, you know, 25% restriction but yet, if they wanted to have an event in the punchline, by the way, restaurant and bar, they couldn't. You know, there's a guy telling jokes while people are having dinner. Um, Matt and Amanda, I want to. I, so I think their questions are, what are they to do? Is now we're getting into, and we'll talk a little bit later about winterization plans from both the state and city levels. But what can a really a large venue like ours, one of our biggest stakeholders, do? to prepare for the inside months. Matt, do you have anything you want to add? I mean, yeah, no, everything you said is correct. I think, you know, you were talking about going back to restrictions prior to July 15th or, or was then uh, for venues. Uh, my biggest thing is that, you know, right now we can open at 25 people, but there's no food and beverage. So, you know, that's the only way that we make any money is on food and beverage. Um, and also kind of, in all of the plans that we've done for the entire market, which includes the Met, it includes the TLA um, as well, none of our percentages actually exceed 24%. So as a company, we're looking at it as, you know, if when we can come back, it's gonna be fully, fully seated cocktail service, you know, no bar service. We're not gonna just jump right back into a, you know, mosh pit, crowd surfing atmosphere. I don't, I don't see that ha happening until hopefully the summer. Um, but you know, everything that we're looking at with the success of punchline, you know, Fillmore can get to about 375 inside. It, it doesn't, it digs me out of a little hole. It doesn't, doesn't make me money, but it, it, it more importantly puts probably 50 to 75 people back to work. And that's sort of been, the, the biggest thing for Amanda and I. Uh, Punchline's able to employ about a little over a dozen employees right now. Um, so my biggest concern kind of is, is when can I tell my people they can come back? And by the way, guys, before you answer, the pl we've actually submitted plans numerous occasions to every department manageable, obviously with Dr. Farley, with Councilman Squilla's help. Um, we were unfortunate, and we just wanted to have a conversation um, because remember the plans that we're talking about are cabaret style. So everybody would be, even in the Fillmore, seated at table, socially distanced with every restriction possible, and we couldn't even get a conversation to talk about why and, and different things to do to do it work. So I guess to Ben and Javier, if you have an answer, is, is there any hope on the horizon for a venue such as this? and any options that they may do that fit into current protocols? I'll let Javier. I think go ahead. I think they're constantly looking into options uh, and, and opportunities and ways to make it happen. It's just, you know, it, they're following specific guidelines. Ben, I know you were about to jump. I was just about to see to Javier. I mean, it's, it's, it's all, you know, we're a city of the first class. We have a, our own health department. Um, the mayor has been, um, def, you know, deferring to Dr. Farley on all these decisions. It's, uh, he's really a one-stop shop, it would seem. 
Um, I, I, but Matt, like, you know, all, all I can say is, as I said, historically in the past four months, the city has been, you know, following what the state does with a lag time. So, um, you know, that's, that's really important, important for you and important for us. Um, I mean, if the question is when are we going to get back to a hundred percent, you know, yeah, I, that's, I'm not even having that conversation. I, I'd, I'd like to get to 14%, <laughs> which is, which allows me to operate. Um, and, you know, for us as a company, you know, you know, we are, we're under the umbrella of live nation. So we're not going to take the chance as some of our contemporaries have in the city with opening, um, it's, it's not worth our risk. I mean, we've probably had over 5,000 people since we opened outside uh, come through our doors um, or our gates, really. Um, so, you know, like you've said before, we're doing it right. Um, you know, we have, we have every precaution in place. We have every sign in place. We've, we've you know, uh, we have the masks, we have the gloves, we have everything that, that's required of us. I think what Mark said, you know, in just trying to get a meeting, the fact that we've been shot down from every department is uh, a little disconcerting right now um, because pre-pandemic, they were answering our phone calls. Question that I know, but I think Ben and, and Javier will probably have to take the political diplomatic answer is, and it's a little bit of a piggyback on what, uh, Matt said, I know that, you know, Rivers Casino has some same concerns in that we certainly have seen other event venues, while they may open up at a smaller capacity, they're still opening up as events. They're, they're booking acts, they're, they're advertising for those acts, they're selling tickets, the tickets aren't for a dinner and there happens to be a comic. And I think, you know, I know as a, listen, I, I take personally all the, all our stakeholders needs and concerns. So it, it is that you can imagine guys, and I know you, there's no answer you can give. The frustration comes because we have stakeholders that are literally doing it by the book, by the guidelines. And we see venues throughout the city that are clearly doing it. Um, I can't say that there's been exceptions made, but certainly it seems enforcement is certainly lagging. So it's important to me um, and I know Matt and Amanda won't say it, but it's important to me to try to find every way possible to legally allow all of our venues, not just the, the Fillmore and the Punchline, but all of our eateries, hospitality, the casino, to maximize their potential safely. We want to do everything safely um, and through every guideline and protocol. But, um, so I, hopefully we can, as you know, Ben, you got a victory today in Harrisburg, and that's great to see we can start to put some of these things on the agenda of, you know, the health department and so forth moving forward. That's sort of my speech. Um, again, I know you guys really can't answer that, um, but know that when I see it, I know our business owners also see it. Um, so it, it, bec it becomes more and more of a struggle as each day comes. Um, and that will lead to my next question. Then I'm going to open it up to everybody. Um, we're thrilled that we hear that the, the, the bill coming to extend outdoor seating, but certainly, you know, depending on what Dr. Farley announces coming next week, colder weather is coming. Um, can you tell any type of ideas, concepts, regulations that you see coming from a Commonwealth or city level that can help our, you know, our, our entities operate to the best capacity they can in the cooler months? Javier, I'll start with you. Well, we, we will follow the, the right procedure for businesses to uh, continue operating uh, using, you know, the, the lamps and the, the probably hopefully opening more indoors than, uh, and try to find, you know, a way to accommodate that business or any business in, in the city restaurants um, but you know th that's what's happening right now it's in that process of putting those guidelines uh, and looking forward for 
what's coming. So uh, that's what the city's you know working on right now. And just for everybody's edification, you know, be mindful of was if you're looking to put outdoor heating, you know, no open flames, you know, no pits outside, you know, follow the preferably electric heaters if you have. Um, have they made a decision, Javier, regarding the propane heaters yet? Yeah, I, um, I, I, that's something I have to go back and, and double check, but I know there's no lamps allowed under any uh, uh, canopies or any, uh, had to be pretty much on their own. Um, but those are, you know, guidelines that now we're, they're working on right now. Ben, anything to add? Yeah, I would estimate that this restaurants in the city have spent well over half a million dollars already to winterize their restaurants. Um, I'm, I can't tell you how disappointed I am. I reached out to the city in the beginning of July to get guidance on outdoor heaters because I had a manufacturer that wanted to give them out to, to restaurants that were branded. And um, I'm, it's, it's September 23rd. I'm still waiting on an answer on whether or not heating is, uh, heating is permitted. Um, you know, we're, we're waiting too long. It was, you know, it was, it was cold over, over the weekend. Uh, we had New York council people in town this past weekend taking pictures of all the safe um, outdoor areas with heat lamps. Heat lamps are outlawed in New York City. They have been. This is not a new thing. And they came down to Philadelphia to watch Philadelphia people do it safe. And um, I, 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 I'm disappointed that we, you know, that we haven't gotten the uh, correct guidance yet. If people need to, they, I mean, it, it's hard to find a uh, propane heater right now. You know, they're, they're hard to find, you know, so, you know, a, a lot of times the answer, and, and I understand there's gonna be gray area, it's not all black and white, but a lot of times the, you know, the, you know, it says no outdoor heating unless approved. No goggles unless approved. No, I mean, we have over 7,000 restaurants in the city of Philadelphia. I don't know if they want their inboxes inundated with 7,000 emails with pictures of, of, of people walking down the aisle at Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, you know, we, we, we've always used outdoor heaters in Philadelphia. Um, you know, I, I would just love a little up or down vote. Um, you know, I, I encourage, and, and listen, you know, I, I watched a lot of friends buy a lot of plexiglass barriers for the bars on my recommendation. Um, lots and lots of money. I, I think they're eventually going to be able to use them again. But, you know, I said these are the guidelines from the state and then, you know, things shifted in the city of Philadelphia. Um, you know, I, uh, Nick Elmy over in on Passiunk, I'm sure he would have liked to have done something else with that $3,000 back in July than have plexiglass barriers in his um, back office until he can use them. You know, Mark over on um, Christian the same way and so many other people that I've seen that have spent so much time and energy when nobody has, and money, and nobody right now has the time, energy, or, or money. Uh, you know, so I, I, I personally would like to see, a, 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 um, you know, some guidance. The, the indoor dining FAQ I put up, we received that yesterday. We had submitted it about two and a half weeks ago. Um, that is all accurate information, so please use that and distribute that to, um, to your res restaurant friends as well. But um, so anyway, you know, I, I want to know, can we build four foot walls to, for, for wind barriers outside? I want to know if we can draw gas lines to put other types of uh, safe heating outside. I want to I, I know if we can install, uh, you know, overhead uh, electric heaters. It, it, and it's, the thing is, you know, as we've walked around the city for the past couple of years, they're all out there anyway. They've, you know, I, I just wanna, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a check the box type of guy, right? I wanna make sure everybody's doing the right thing. I don't want 
you know, I, I showed up at um, uh, John Myra, who owns a tree, has called me on, called me on, and, and this is just some, you know, some information for you. But he called me that L and I was at Tree on 12th Street, and he was being issued a ticket because his umbrella was 79 inches high, and the uh, minimum requirement is 80 inches high. Um, the other side was 83 inches high because the city sidewalk was on a slant. Um, you know, so that was unfortunate. As I was leaving that place, I got a call from, uh, I won't mention the restaurant, but another restaurant who had a health department, um, uh, health department visited seven o'clock on a Thursday night while they were in the middle of the service. And I was able to talk to, uh, Pollock at, at the time, the health inspector, uh, talk, called Pollock with the health department. And I had asked, I said, you know, I know you guys are very under resourced right now. I was wondering why there's a uh, inspection at seven o'clock at night on a Thursday night, because they had asked the place, they, they had found a, a few mouse droppings in the basement in a, in a non uh, prep area, like below storage. And I said, uh, you know, can I ask you why this place is being inspected on a Thursday night? Because they'd asked them to close down for 48 hours and to kick everybody out who was dining outside. And they said there was a COVID complaint against them. And I said, may I ask what the COVID complaint was? And she said, absolutely. The COVID complaint was that the restaurant tables outside were not properly socially distanced. I said, understood. I said, Ms. Johnson, when you arrived on the premise was did you observe any tables that were too close together? No. I said, did you see anybody not wearing masks? No. Any unsafe or unsanitary practices? No. Any COVID-related activity that could have caused these folks to get jammed up? She said no. So I, I left the conversation there, but now I'm, I'm going to have to get a um, you know, meeting with the city because I, I don't think it's right that if your neighbor is jealous of you, that you have too many people or, you know, that you're doing a more robust business than them, that, you know, if you just call and make a complaint and all of a sudden your entire place is inspected, it's kind of like getting pulled over for speeding and then they find the weed in my uh, glove box that I had in there from last year or something. But um, I don't have it. I know this is being recorded. I'm just going to say. I'm just using that as a and, and, and Javier for the group. Uh, the Fishtown District is part of the... Uh, I, we just created a, a Philadelphia Bid Alliance, which is um, all of the business improvement districts in the city have kind of come together. Um, COVID really precipitated it, you know, so we were very active in the outdoor seating regulations. And we recently just put together a memo we sent to the city regarding our hopes and wishes for, like you were saying, Ben, clarification for what to do with weatherization, what we would like, you know, as far as not just the outdoor heaters, but we even came up with blanket ideas. So when we really, so, so I'll try, certainly share that as and we're of course waiting to hear back, but uh, we'll go from there. One last question that I really do want to open it up for the group. A couple of our places are more, we have a, you know, so a caterer, we have the casino, we have, uh, is there any type of guidance for banquet dinners? What, if they, if they can happen, can they happen? That was a specific question. Like, like indoor banquets? Yes, indoor. I mean, right now in the state and in Pennsylvania, you know, in, indoor events are capped at 25 people, including Still. staff. Okay. Same in the um, city, 25. Okay. Can you explain the difference between Hi, this is Emily from the casino. Um, cuz I I've, I've had trouble finding clarity and the um city website isn't uh, reflective or updated um, in real time as what is um, described. So it's really hard to try to find an answer. Can you explain the difference between um, a restaurant seating capacity, like, you know, let's say the capacity is 100 people, that's, that's their 25%, and uh, a banquet dinner for 50, 75 people in a 10,000 square foot space, uh, a, a sit down dinner. What, what, what are some of the guidelines or um, the reasons just so that we can get some clarity on that and some answers? Thanks, Emily. 
you want me to take this one? So, um, yeah, so I, I mean, I can bring you, I, I, Emily, I can send this to you if you, I'll throw my email up here because um, it would require a couple minutes of searching. But, um, you know, an, an event is a specific group. An event is a birthday party. An event is a bat mitzvah. An event is a micro wedding. Um, so that, that is capped at 25 people indoor across the entire state and, uh, and in Philadelphia right now. Um, the capacity limit with 25% indoor right now for Philadelphia would be separate tables of individual parties or families uh, joining you. I don't know if that makes any sense. But in your 3,000 square foot ballroom, for some reason, um, you're allowed to have an event for 25 people. However, if it wasn't an event and you were hosting an open dinner for 300 people and you had, um, you know, you had 84 tops out there, you could seat all 84 tops as long as they were socially distanced as an open dinner event, as an open dinner restaurant space. However, if it was an event, you would be capped at 25 people. Okay. I'm gonna put my email up. You can, yeah, we can go offline on this too. Thanks. Mark, can I chime in here for a second? Please go, I wanted to open it up to the group. Yes, um, yeah. So, uh, Thanks to, to Javier and Ben for being here. Ben, nice to see you again. Ben and I are part of a group that meets on Thursday afternoons. Ben probably wishes that there were fewer hours in the day to have all of these Zoom meetings. Um, that's uh, the Pennsylvania, um, the private event professionals of Pennsylvania, PEPP, P-E-P-P. -P -P. It's primarily caterers, although not exclusively, many of them from the city, and, and they're not exclusively from the city. Quite a few from Bucks and Montgomery as well, and some from further out. So we get an update. Ben's there frequently, so is Melissa, uh, and we've had other guests, including Councilman Dobb, Dom, among others. Um, Emily, to answer your question, in terms of what the distinction is, is in, as far as the state's concerned, the state is concerned about the mingling that happens during cocktail hours and dance floors, both of which they see as being specific to events as opposed to um, 25 or 50 people in a restaurant when each table has no real relationship with each other. I'm not... Um, I'm not signing on to the, I'm not, a, I'm, not, I'm not signing on nor arguing with it, but that's the rationale behind it, that they are looking to avoid um, the mingling that happens similar to what uh, the expectation is of what's going on in a bar where there's no food being served and people are mingling at the bar or in a nightclub. So yeah, that, that's, that's helpful. Yeah, we're trying to figure out, like, got, like, we understand that some events that want to book don't have cocktail hour or dancing. So we're trying to, you know, and they're 25 people. So we're just trying to navigate, but I'll, I'll talk to Ben offline. I yeah, don't want to take up the time. The, yeah, the, 20, the 25 indoors still counts, although also I'll mention for what it's worth, it does not include back of house staff, if that's at all helpful. Not that any of us are gonna make a living out of 25 people with front of house staff, but it does not include back of house staff. Thank you, Skip. Sure. Does anybody else have any questions or anything to add? I can also send additional information by email too. So, um, yep. Thank you, Javier. Hi, I have a quick question. Uh, Stephanie from Joe Steaks. Um, so recently we, um, the, we're allowed 25% capacity inside. And I think I, I saw that uh, close, they have to call, last call for 11 o'clock and restaurants have to be closed completely by midnight. So right now we're closing at 11 and out by 12. I just wanted to make sure, like, could we close at 11.30 and be out by 12? Like, we just have to be out by 12? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's similar to like last call, last call rules, you know? So we used to give last call at two, you know, you wanna get out of there by whenever, 2.30. So the, the rule as it stands is you have to give, and, and we're kind of aligned with the state on this a little bit right now. So, um, you know, the, the, 
the guidance from PLCB is last call for alcohol sales is at 11 p.m. currently. So outside of the city of Philadelphia, last call for alcohol sales would be 11 o'clock. But that the restaurants could remain open past that. Philadelphia specifically, last call for seating and last call for, you know, food, last call for alcohol is 11 o'clock. Correct. And the restaurant has to be closed, guest out of the building. Yep. Okay, so we're not we're not even seating inside. We're just doing takeout and delivery. So I'm wondering, can we stay open till midnight? But then it takes us a half hour to clean, and our get, our employees are out by twelve thirty. Yeah. So we can stay open till midnight on Friday and Saturday. Javier, do you have a? I, I don't know, but I mean, they're not doing. Yeah, they, we'll have to get back to you. I mean, definitely for indoor. Um, is uh, until last call at 11 and then customers out by midnight and the staff can stay longer, you know, closing and okay. cleaning. Okay, yeah, because we're, we're not even doing indoor right now, we're just doing takeout. So yeah, it, okay. it, just, it just following the same guidance that you've been following. Okay, thank you. At the outdoor, yep, you're welcome. And we'll keep sure to make sure get any updates getting out to you, Stephanie, and everybody else so that they know exactly what to do. Uh, I have a quick question for Ben and or Javier. And Ben, we kind of talked about this a little bit. So if you're having, you know, if it's in a restaurant, they're completely compliant with 25% uh, uh, indoor dining. They can have live entertainment as long as the, 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 the you're paying the dinner is the, the, uh, the ticket item. Am I correct in that? Yeah, there's nothing against live entertainment. However, on your guys' call that I'm never invited to on Tuesday mornings, um, there was a mention of entertainment. There's no entertainment allowed at mm -hmm. for, for street closures. So you can't have like, you can't, they don't want a festival type crowd during street closures. So they don't want any outdoor entertainment that would make people possibly congregate. But like uh, to have like a band inside or something, as long as they are all socially distanced and socially distanced away from your, you know, from any possible guest or pedestrian, uh, that's fine. Awesome. Thank you. I get um, that. I get that. Did I nail that, Javier? Yeah, pretty much. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any other questions? And I also want to know we have... Um, some of our colleagues from both the uh, House of Representatives and the uh, Senate. So please feel free to jump in if you have any updates or anything you want to add. Um, uh, I know things are changing by the minute. We're lucky to have the partners we do with Representative Isaacson. I see Samantha Pearson is on the call. Uh, Marissa Moreland from Senator Farnese's office is on the call. So if you have anything to add, now's the time. I'll add one thing, if I may. Uh, Ben's going to hear this tomorrow, I'm sure, at the PEP call. But to Javier, because it's a conduit to the city, um, I did read the PRLA FAQs page. Thank you, Ben. Please pass that on. That was helpful. But the injunction against there being more than four, from even from one family at a table, is a little problematic on the event side, especially if capacity increases. Um, the, the rule, the, the question and answer is specifically, if I have a family that has more than four people, may they still sit together indoors? And the answer is no. So that theoretically, um, two parents um, with four children cannot sit at the same table, even though they all live together in the same household. Um, for, that to get, for that to be reviewed inside the city, Javier, would be greatly appreciated. It um, potentially has, it has issues relative to square footage that a, a an event venue has to provide socially distanced seating, as well as being a, a disincentive for people to hold their events in the city as opposed to going outside of Philadelphia, which is what we're finding happening. So if you could pass that along within the city to Dr. Farley, we'd appreciate that. Yep. May, I, may I mention that if you have uh, particular events or if you wanna do something, just email Justine and Palak. People have already been given permission to have larger tables within the city limits that's great no i, I appreciate it and, and yeah i mean that like that's the official guidance but as, as you know it's always 
what if you email. Understood. So, Appreciate. It. Yeah. So I, I just and and listen, the city's been working really well with everybody. I mean, they've been bending over backwards to 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 do as much as they can to help out, and and they've been they've been honoring like like I would say like ninety percent of of requests. Like they, they've just been amazing. Right. I, you know, it's a pain pain in the butt that you you know um, have to reach out, but I, I would rather you reach out and. And and um, you know, give them a give them a little drawing of what these six tops or seven tops look like, and how they're spaced out, and how you are uh, mitigating uh, uh, spread efforts, and how you're doing, uh, you know, how how you're preparing for contact tracing and all that biz, and and then you get the go ahead on that. But that okay. That's great. Yeah, I I will say that. I mean, as frustrating I know as frustrating as it is. Um, for people in Javier's position and other positions in government to hear people complaining. I'm not really taking it as personally in the sense that someone's doing it to us. I don't see what point there is in not being able to relax guidelines. No politician benefits from not being able to relax guidelines. Um, they, don't get, they don't get extra votes for that, but, but there are times when it's challenging to try and get a straight answer for certain things. Um, and that's really what the, the, the uh, that's where the bottleneck is for a lot of us, but I appreciate that, Ben, thank you. Sure, and and you know it seems that you know for for one offs, um, it it's very they're so helpful and so responsive. You know when when I when you know when I like pull up a, you know when I pull up a picture of um, you know, give me a second here. But like when I pick pull up a picture of um, you know a, a pair of glasses and being like. Are these are these good to go? You know, it, it might be it, it might take me a, a month to get an answer on that. But you know, when for for one off type things, but they also know when you know I get the answer, I'm going to share it, and it's going to be you know it's going to be the rule. You know, so I, I totally get that. But they've been so helpful with the individual operators. I mean, I can't applaud them enough. Thank you, guys. We're coming up on almost an hour, so I certainly want to be respectful of. Uh, been in Javier's time, but if, does anyone else have any other questions for the guys? And uh, before we let them go, I know they have a million other things to do. Um, hopefully, in furtherance of all of these things. Any other questions? Hi, I have a question. It's Janae. Go ahead, Janae. Um, hey, so I know we were talking about having space for you know, event space. Like, I mean, if you have like twenty-five people, that's okay. But what do you do about like dancing? Is that something that's completely still yeah, forbidden? We are we are in footloose land right now here in Philadelphia. They are there is no dancing right now. No. Uh, All right. No Thanks. dancing, no, no dance floors. Outside of it's outside of Philadelphia, you know, John Lithgow lives here. Outside of Philadelphia, you're in you're in much better shape. Although it's not encouraged and there's no like dance floors per se. But um Listen, here, here's the deal, like, and, and, and in order, you know, and I, in order for us to get back, I, like, no seat, no service. I mean, yeah, there's no more cocktail hours right now. There's no past or d'oeuvre type congregating right now. Um, you know, I was talking to a young lady who has like a 40 top from um, Wharton. And, you know, I was just like, that's like my... I was like, they, they make sure they know they're gonna have to stay in their seats the whole time. And then she has 20 inside and 20 outside. I said, they can't even go back and forth. I said, I, I would, you know, it's, it's gonna be a mess. But you know, like it, it, it's, uh, you know, there, there's, there's, there's no standing up and drinking right now. There's no standing up and eating right now. We, I, and, 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 and we really had to follow these guidelines in order for Farley and everybody else to see that we're doing the right thing. And, and it's safe. I mean, like we, we also know it's safe, but um, yeah, so, so right now, you know, it, it's problematic. Now, like, you know, if a, uh, I'm having a micro wedding and uh, like the bride and groom are having a, a dance in between tables, you know, nobody's gonna shut you down for that. You know, if you, uh, you know, if, if uh, Matt starts a mosh pit, you know, LC might show up, but you know, that it's a whole different, whole different stories. Okay, thank you. Thanks, guys. I just want to say if you have any specific question, you're more than welcome to email me and I'll get
get the answer. And also I put some uh, guidelines or indoor safety uh, tips uh, on the chat. So thank you. Uh, if we get new information, I'll, I'll, put, I'll pass that along. And certainly for our stakeholders on here, certainly please continue to email me because certainly um, I bombard the Javier and Ben and everyone else uh, every day, but uh, they've been wonderful and responsive. So thank you guys. With that, if there's any more questions, I want to um, call it. Uh, so I want to thank, thank you, Javier. Thank you, Ben, for your time, your information. Uh, ben, congratulations on SB 2513. Well done. Um, and uh, we, listen, we look forward to continued progress and everybody's continued good health. Thanks so much, everybody, and have a great day. Thank you so much for having me. Have a good day.